In this episode of Pedal Boredom, I talk about the journey to this pedal board and three mistakes that I hope you'll avoid by listening to my story coming up. this is our first time meeting, my name is Justin and I'm all about worship guitar, helping you sound and play your best for Jesus. If you want to support these videos and my ministry, please consider liking, subscribing, hitting that bell notification button and heading over to my buy me a coffee page after this to download my patches and more. If you've met before, welcome back. A friend commented that I'm becoming a Line 6 evangelist for Singaporean P-dubbers and I'm not gonna lie, I am a full convert. Having tried many pieces of gear in the past, Line 6 ticks all my boxes regarding affordability, triggerability, and most importantly, tone. But I do miss some gear that I've played before. In particular, I loved my TC electronic gear, their overdrives, the flashback delay, and the Hall of Fame reverb. I had various boards loaded with TC gear for the longest time, then did a gear purge to build my forever board. So when a sale from Sweetie came along, I jumped back on the TC bandwagon with their Plethora X5 and all three drive pedals, the Spark Booster, the Mojo Mojo Overdrive, and the Dark Matter Distortion. I got really excited unboxing all of these pedals. I was a young working adult again, taking my paycheck to the music store to get a hold of new toys to play with. The first build was actually with the Strymon Iridium as the M-SIM at the end of the chain, but I ran into three significant problems which I've turned into tips so you can learn from my mistakes. Number one, thoroughly research your input and output needs. The Strymon Iridium is a fantastic M-SIM and it does feature stereo ins and outs. I counted four jacks on the back of the pedal, but my dad brain and under-caffeinated state must have misread the labels on the pedal. Those four jacks aren't input left right and output left right. There's only one input jack. It hit me that the Iridium needed a dual TS to TRS breakout cable for stereo input, a cable which I didn't have. There goes my plan to go stereo from the plethora into the Iridium. Granted, it's not a significantly major issue, but it meant I had to plan an additional trip to a store to get that cable made. And as all parents of newborns know, there are no additional trips to the stores. There is no going out. Ever. I ended up running the whole board mono, which wasn't that bad, but it wasn't meeting the creative vision I had for this board. I then ran into a second problem which involves power. Number two, good power is everything on a pedal board. Buzzing and humming from digital noise, ground loops, fluorescent light bulbs, your mother's radio, you've heard them and detest them. And that's what you're going to get if you use a non-isolated daisy chain power supply like the Visual Sound One Spot. I initially thought I could reduce the noise with a power supply like the Pedal Dream Volto, which essentially is a high-powered pedal board battery. I was very wrong. It was still very noisy, particularly when I had a power-hungry pedal like the Iridium in the chain. I then tried using the power supplies that came with the respective units, plugging several power supplies into a multi-plug adapter, but the noise persisted. Not only was there noise, I had a nasty surprise electric shock from my guitar strings. When that happened, I removed the daisy chain. I was going to need to make another purchase. Enter the Chiox DC7, a power supply that Jimmy Cooper of Haywood should be recommended due to its low profile and extensive power capabilities. The difference between the pre-DC7 and post-DC7 sound was night and day. The board became quiet and more importantly, it was safe to touch metal parts of my guitar. There was one final problem with the board and it's non-guitar tone related. Number 3. Consider your utility needs. You see, I'm really big on utility and would prefer the pedal board to do two non-guitar tone related things. Number one, headphone monitoring, and number two, USB recording. Well then, just plug the pedal board direct to your USB interface. I did, and I encountered a problem that you might face too even with a two input USB interface. Budget ones like my trusty Steinberg UR22 mono sum the inputs for headphone monitoring, which would be okay for mono sources like a single voice and an acoustic guitar, but for a stereo pedal board, mono summed delay and reverb sounded weird on my UR22 in particular. And hence, we arrive at the current iteration of the board. Integrating a HX Stomp, 
the ultimate super stomp box slash msim slash utility pedal. It's just no getting away from the HX stomp. I appreciate how the headphone output doesn't mono sound inputs, there's flexibility in deciding where to place my effects, and most importantly, I can use it as a one-stop shop to monitor and record with great tone, of course. And now let's do a rig rundown of this board featuring Line 6 and TC electronic gear. The guitar goes into the input of the HX stomp, which has a mono to stereo effects loop block. The rest of my pedals are in this loop, starting with the Hotone Valpress Combo Wild Volume pedal, then into the TC Electronics Plethora X5. The Plethora has its own effects loop, which has my drive pedals, the Spark Booster, the Mojo Mojo Overdrive, and the Dark Matter Distortion. I have a Dunlop Mini Volume pedal, which is wired in the Plethora's expression input, and from there, I have a choice of running the Dunlop as an expression pedal to control any of the effects in the Plethora, or a volume pedal that I can place pre- or post-effects loop allowing me to pre-gain volume control to clean up the drives or post-gain volume control that will act like a master volume. From there, we go back into the HX Stomp where I have an all-stereo signal chain following the FX loop. At the moment, I'm running the HX Stomp for amps, delays and reverbs which is quite DSP intensive but I found a combination of blocks that sound great while being DSP light. All this on a mono small pedal board with a DC7 power supply mounted underneath. I use a 5V USB output primarily to power my Sony ZV-1 camera which is significantly improving my workflow because I don't need to worry about batteries dying on me mid-take. <laughs> In sum, the journey to this pedal board could have been a lot smoother. I could have avoided a headache and an electric shock if I had just researched which gear would fit my needs as a player, music director, and content creator. Which brings us to today's question of the day. What's your rig rundown of your main pedal board? Comment below what's your signal path, any quirky pedals that you love, and any tips you may have which could benefit the rest of us. Post a link to a video if you have one. I'd love to hear your stories, ideas, and thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. If you got any value out of it, like it and share it with someone whom you know is interested in building a pedal board. Until next time, I'm Justin, and I'm all about worship guitar.